Hey, this is Dave with OCE Astronomy. I wanted to give an update on our dome and we've made a couple of small changes, but I think it's going to be good. I'll give them to you real quick in a, in a, in a, uh, a telescope update. So, um, there's two things that we do here at OC Astronomy. One is uh, we have students and I'm a adjunct professor and there's another professor uh, that, that uh, also one of the physics professors and we have students and we want to use the telescopes when we can at night and I've uh, we have the Celestron Edge 1100 OTA which is a nice big aperture but we found that with the um, using the Smith Cassegrain focus out the back it was uh, a little bit difficult. Um, it's hard to get pictures even at f7. It's hard to get pictures in a short time frame uh, for I guess you'd call it EAA or electronically assisted astronomy trying to show the students and and people live and in person what you can see with the telescope uh, without doing pre-processed pictures. The students don't like the pre-processed pictures because they can just see any picture anywhere with Google image. So it's nice to have something live to show them. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to F7 to get a picture fast enough. But the other thing that we do here is I've tried to do a little short amount of uh, small amount of exoplanet research. And uh, to do that, you need to have a good rigid setup with a, a you know, F7 is, is pretty good for that because uh, if you have too wide of a field, you can't see, you know, get zoomed in close enough on the field that you want to do photometry. Um, and so I have two different needs and so we've come up with this solution. And uh, I'll turn the, turn the camera around now and show you what we've got. So this is the big revolution in our setup. Um, I went with just the uh, science camera that we had from SBIG, Santa Barbara Instruments Group, um, and with their off-axis guider. And I removed the filter wheel, I removed the moonlight focuser, and I removed uh, everything else that's in the way. And the only thing that's there now is this adapter from Starazona, and it goes straight to T-threads, and the T-threads go straight into the off-axis guider, into the camera. And uh, it's got a connector here that's got a slip ring to let you orient the camera. Um, but right now I have it just oriented with the long side north. And um, it's got plenty of field of view to see whatever star that I want to put in the center. Um, it's rigidly all connected. It's all screwed together. There's nothing that will move at all. Um, the only thing that can move now is the, uh, the mirror inside. Um, we decided to go with this focuser, and I'll explain the real reason for that in a second, but uh, went with the Pegasus, Pegasus Astro, and um, they had a focus motor, <laughs> actually, that I found on sale, so I, I got it, and uh, and I got the, the one that doesn't have the focus controller built in. They also make them that have built-in focus controllers. Um, I didn't because I have the Pegasus Power Box up top. And the Pegasus Power Box has an Ethernet connection, uh, RJ45, um, and you can go straight into there and it controls this. You can also buy them that you have a USB port and that it has the focus controller built in. But anyway, like I said, since I have the Power Box already, um, I just went with this one. Um, there is a one built by Celestron, and I don't, I'm not going to dog on their equipment because I don't have it and I don't own it. But I believe that the one from Celestron uses a DC servo motor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and it just focuses by going in and out and it's relative. And this is a stepper motor and it has an absolute positioning. So it helps to get repeatable focus and also you can temperature train it. I'm sure you can probably temperature train the Celestron one too, but um, anyway, I, I found a good deal on this one, let's be honest. That's why I didn't buy the Celestron one. Uh, and it already worked with my power box. So I have this uh, new focuser that we added um, and it'll focus by moving the main mirror. Now that's, that'll, that could cause a little bit of image shift, but I think as long as I do it consistently where uh, I move out to start my focus routine and then move in to focus or vice versa, um, as long as I'm moving the same direction every time, I think the image shift won't be a problem. Um, I did take out the moonlight focuser because 
uh, I think it was just better to have this rigid connection, no shift at all. Uh, this never moves now. The, the only thing that moves is the, is the mirror for focusing. Um, and I think that that'll give me repeatability and, and it'll put the planet or the, the star that I'm looking for an exoplanet around, it'll always keep it consistently on the same pixel. The other thing is that with the Paramount, um, it's really good to have a rigid connection because then you can use T-Point and the T-Point add-on um, and then you can use ProTrack. And ProTrack I've found to be extremely good. Um, it's really good if you have it PEC trained and you use ProTrack, you almost don't need guiding. Um, I do have the off-axis guider here uh, because using the exoplanet research, you really do need to, to guide because you want to try to keep things on the same pixel. Um, but the guider doesn't have to work near as hard. I can dial down the aggressiveness to um, five or so. And also, uh, because this is a longer focal length, um, I can take a longer exposure because sometimes it's hard to find stars in random fields of view where I'm trying to find a planet star, an exoplanet star. I need to guide on something and sometimes it's very difficult to find a, uh, a star to guide on. But you can guide it on a star if you can have an in, you know, a long exposure length. So uh, by using the pro track in combination, then I don't have uh, as much drift anyway. And then I can find a star that's maybe got, you know, five seconds or so, even seven seconds to guide on. Um, and it doesn't move much in that time and it just gently corrects it back to where it needs to go. And it's never making drastic movements and it'll keep it locked on. So that's my focusing setup and the camera science, the, sa the science camera and the guide camera. And this is all now in one lockdown configuration. Now, I like to call this the telescope mullet. Uh, I guess it's a reverse mullet because it's uh, business at the back and party at the front because I got a friend, I found a, an astronomy friend here in town and he has lent me dun, 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 Hyperstar lens. So let me back out a little bit here. So now we have the Hyperstar lens at the, at the front and uh, ZWO, uh, there you can see the 294 uh, one-shot color camera at the front. And um, what that allows us to do then is, um, obviously I can't use the camera at the back while I'm using this, but it allows us to, to use this most of the time to show students. And uh, we've got our, our Hyperstar lens in there. And um, it allows us to do really, really quick uh, EAA type uh, pictures and bring up a picture on the screen and show the students what's going on. And then also we have tried it with some uh, 60 and 90 second exposures. It gets really, really, really good images. Um, and also with this nice uh, steady setup it, uh, and pro track, I don't have to guide at all whenever I'm doing this. So it makes it so simple uh, to use with the students. All I have to do is connect to the telescope, point it at target, turn on pro track, and uh, I'm in business and it uh, it guides and it holds holds it steady and then I can do either uh, build up an image uh, using the sky X um, live view or I can take a short exposure and and even you know with a one minute exposure I can see what the target is and uh, convert to color and 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 wow the students that way and I think so far the results have been good the students like seeing a, a quicker picture so whenever I'm not using that, all I got to do is uh, disconnect uh, the Hyperstar lens and put back in the secondary. And then uh, in place of the weight of that, I have another uh, counterweight down here under the tape, gaffer tape and a hot pad. Um, but uh, I can screw that weight on here and then adjust it forward a little bit and it balances and uh, compensates for the weight lost by taking off the Hyperstar. So, um, I found that little magical place in Spain, a little town called Valencia, where everything is in balance. I got my, my nutrition and my exercise is balanced. I got my home life and my work life balanced. And, and I got my OTA balanced at Valencia. Ah, oh, well, that was a stupid dad joke. But I hope that uh, I hope you enjoy my new setup. Uh, leave a comment below if you if you think that this will work for me. I hope it, I hope it does. Um, and yeah, so that's the new OC Astronomy rig. 
Um, we've tried to do away and simplify as much as we can, and I think this has struck the right balance. Um, it lets us do the science stuff on one end and the uh, teaching stuff on the other end. So thank you to Paramount and Celestron and Pegasus Astro and SBIG and not sponsored, but uh, we do love the, the Hyperstar. So um, all this stuff is really great gear and we're really proud to have it. So here's the update from the OC Dome. Um, hope you found it fun and interesting. All right, clear skies, everybody.